One Piece is a big series, like really big. Bigger than most people tend to comprehend. There is an almost Tolkien-like level of detail in regards to this world's lore, and over the course of the next, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, I'm going to give you a rundown of more than 5,000 years of One Piece history. So wish me luck, because uh, I think I'm going to need it. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we have a very ambitious project to embark on, because our aim is going to detail the One Piece timeline, which is significantly more difficult than you may think. At this point, we've had over 1,000 chapters of material that has been published for 24 years, and within said material, there is roughly 5,000 years of in-world history, which is, hmm, it's quite a bit, but we're going to do it right here and right now. And before we begin, yes, other people have made videos sort of like this one in the past. However, those videos primarily detail Luffy's journey in the series and is basically a chronological retelling of One Piece, which I'm sure you already know. I'm not quite interested in that. I'm not here to take you step-by-step step through Luffy's journey. Instead, Instead, what I'm going to do is take you step by step through the 5,000 years prior to Luffy's journey. Everything we've actually experienced with Luffy is a grain of sand in a vast desert compared to this world's much larger history. And since the amount of research that went into this video was kind of mind-bogglingly insane, please do subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will help pay for my RSI treatment after spending a gargantuan amount of time at the keyboard. But it will also grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, so it's definitely in your best interest to do so. But to begin this journey, as with all ancient history, we start with something of a question mark. The earliest known period in the One Piece world is referred to as the Age of Heaven. Unfortunately, we have no idea exactly when this was. At earliest, it could have ended 1,500 years ago, but it could also be 5, 10, 20, 50,000 years ago, whenever, we don't know. But it was brought up by Nika Robin on Alabaster when she was reading that Poneglyph. And it should be noted that Robin is definitely lying about a lot of the historical events she brings up in regards to the Age of Heaven, and very much could be lying about the entire age itself, given that it was all an effort to stop Crocodile obtaining Pluton. But still, I'd like to think that as a proud scholar, Robin used knowledge she possessed to form a more viable story, and that the Age of Heaven is commonly known and taught in the One Piece world. However, the official calendar system that we go by is known as the Age of Kayenreki, which literally means the Age of the Sea Circle, and is also known as the Age of Kayen in the Viz Manga translation. And we know this pretty much exclusively thanks to the logs of one Noland, who very handily provided us with detailed information regarding time and dates. And from this tiny piece of historical fact, we can pretty much build an entire timeline of this series. And so we shall, starting with our earliest known event, which occurred around 3,500 years prior to the age of Kainreki, which is the planting of the Tree of Knowledge on the island of Ohara, a very familiar structure that would go on to serve this world for about 5,000 years before, uh, well, look, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves there. Let's not spoil the timeline. From here though, we skip forward about a thousand years, at which point the Palace of Alubana was built. You know the the one that Vivi wanted to blow up during the Alabaster arc. Very interestingly though, apparently this palace structure actually predates the nation of Alabaster itself, which hints at the idea that there may have been an even more ancient civilization that inhabited this country. However, from here we are kept in a couple of millennia's worth of mystery before arriving at the commencement of the Age of Kainreki, which occurred roughly 1,500 years prior to the modern day and officially starts our calendar at year zero. Our next recorded event then strikes in the year 402. This is the earliest known mention of the gold city of Shandora, with Nika Robin claiming that the city thrived during this time. So this also means the Sky Citizens came down from the moon at some stage prior to this year and founded their three civilizations, Skypea, Burka, and Shandora, the latter of which was the only one to be founded on the Blue Sea. Then we skip to approximately the year 500, which is our earliest reference to the Phantom Island Zoo, also known as the Grand Elephant Zunesha. This elephant allegedly committed a grave crime and as punishment, it was sentenced to walk the world indefinitely, with no other agency unless ordered to otherwise such as when Momonosuke ordered Zunesha to attack Jack. And the year 500 was when the Mink tribe cut off all contact with the outside world. Also around the year 500 is when a very long-term quarrel began between the Long Arm and Long Leg tribes, a feud that actually remains to this very day, although we do have examples of cooperation now at the very least with Blue Gilly and Ideo. But then things take a turn for the mysterious as the year 600 hails the beginning of what would become known as the Void Century. All records of world history of this time period have been erased with the exception of the information inscribed on the Poneglyphs. With that said, we do still know quite a bit, such as during this century, there was a single great kingdom that acted as a global superpower. This kingdom was responsible for building and wielding each of our three ancient weapons, Pluton, Poseidon, and Uranus. I mean, granted, they obviously didn't build Poseidon because Poseidon's a living mermaid, but you get the idea. But in response to this power, 20 smaller kingdoms formed an alliance and then went to war against the great kingdom. These 20 kingdoms included the ancestors of both the Don Quixote and Nefertari families, the former of which was the current ruling 
ruling dynasty of Dressrosa and the other of Alabaster. However, the Great Kingdom did also have allies during this time, Water 7 being a very notable one, and in fact, Bluton was built on that very island. Hence why the blueprints were passed down to the modern era. Meanwhile, the golden city of Shandora was also an ally, although their nation was brought to the brink of destruction by the war. And of course, the Kozuki clan of Wano was also pledged to the Great Kingdom, and they would be the ones responsible for constructing the Poneglyphs. During the Void Century, we also have mention of a figure named Joy Boy, who broke a promise with our mermaid princess slash ancient weapon Poseidon, and left a massive structure known as the Noah in the care of the Fishman monarchy. And just a quick spoiler warning here regarding Joy Boy, if you are not caught up with Act 3 of Wano, please do skip to this time, but for everyone else, we do a thing. Joy Boy is also known to have set foot on the island, which would become known as Laugh Tale, and he left a very vaguely defined treasure there, which forms the catalyst of most of the events of modern One Piece. All right, spoilers over. Meanwhile, in the latter half of the Void Century, around the year 674, an individual named Amatsuki Toki was born. She consumed a devil fruit known as the Toki Toki no Mi and proceeded to travel forward in time. So uh, huh, I guess we'll be catching up with her a bit later. But by the end of the Void Century, the Great Kingdom had lost the war, with both it and the ancient weapon seemingly disappearing entirely from existence. The only record of any of them currently resides on the Kozuki constructed poneglyphs, which tell the true history of this time, as well as the location of the ancient weapons and the hidden island Laugh Tale. But with the year 700, recorded history begins again, commencing with the 20 kingdoms remaining united and evolving their cooperation to become the world government. The royal families of these 20 kingdoms then migrated to the Holy Land of Marijuara atop the Red Line and became the very first world nobles. The only exception to this was the Nefertari family who remained in Alabaster. Meanwhile, on Dressrosa, this would be when the Riku dynasty took over as rulers due to the disappearance of the Don Quixote monarchy. And this would be a painfully productive century as towards the year 800, the world nobles ordered the construction of Tequila Wolf, an unfathomably large bridge so huge that it is now considered its own nation. And to this very day, its construction has still yet to be completed. During our next century, an ancient giant named Oz would rise to power, becoming known as the Continent Puller. He also created what has been described as a nation of villains and took over several unknown countries, many of which he quite literally took by chaining them up and just, you know, pulling them away. Oz and his nation of villains were seemingly unstoppable from the perspective of the relatively newly formed world government. However, Oz did manage to stop himself when he arrived at the Land of Ice and died of frostbite. However, his corpse would also be preserved by this ice and later used by Gecko Moria 500 years into the future during the events of Thula Bark. Also, just a side note, Oz died at the age of 159, so he was very, very young for a giant, many of whom live well into their 400s, let alone the ancient giants, which, well, we know very little about. But getting very specific now, we land in the year 1120, where we find the first recorded entry of Noland, an explorer from North Blue who ventured throughout the Grand Line and even into the New World, where there is still record of his existence, actually, having met the Tontada tribe on Green Bit. In the year 1122, Noland arrived on Jaya Island and was able to cure a disease that had plagued the Shandian people. During this time, Noland was also shown the ruins of the golden city of Shandora and vowed to return to the island someday. Unfortunately, that day, well, it would never come because in the year 1126, a violent knock-up stream shot half of Jaya containing the Shandian golden city up into the sky, immediately commencing a 400 year long war with the Shandians and the Skypeans, the latter of whom had quite a taste for war due to their, at the time, very trigger happy god. But Noland would return to Jaya a year later in the year 1127 with the King of Luvnil, a monarchy in North Blue, only to discover that the Golden City and the Shandians were gone. Noland was then swiftly branded as a liar by the king and executed. And to this day, Noland's name would go on to live in infamy in a North Blue cautionary fairy tale. Speaking of North Blue, the next century would see a catastrophic event as somewhere around the year 1200, the German Empire took over the entirety of North Blue by force. They proceeded to reign over the sea for exactly 66 days before their stranglehold was broken and they returned to being the German kingdom. But that's where the whole German double six name comes from. It's also why the German have a perception of being associated with evil and why they are the major antagonists of the Sora Warrior of the Sea comic strip. Then at some stage around the year 1324, the world government officially made an alliance with Fishman Island and their royal family was invited to attend their first reverie. Although they would not have the opportunity to go again for another 200 years. Very important social progress though, because this would be the first year that fishmen and mermaids became legally categorized as people rather than just fish. Getting within a century of modern day now, in the year 1422, co-captains of the giant warrior pirates, Dory and Broggy would have a falling out on the island of Little Garden and begin their never ending duel. And unfortunately, as a result of this, later this century, we would see some of the former giant warrior pirates crew be caught and sentenced to death by the world government. However, they were saved due to the actions of then sister Carmel, who used her newfound rapport with the giants to open up an orphanage on their homeland of Elbaf. But then a very important thing of note occurred in the year 1447, because this would be the year that saw the birth of the future
Electric Pirate King, Goldie Roger. That is all. Moving on in 1461, a young Charlotte Linen would be abandoned on the island of Elbaf and taken in by now Mother Carmel's orphanage. During this time, a very volatile Linen would destroy an entire village, kill an elder giant, and even eat everyone at the orphanage, including Carmel herself. This event would be witnessed by a man named Stroyson, who decided to use Linlin for his own benefit, and the beginnings of the Big Mom Pirates were formed. Going a bit further now, in 1472, the Rumbar Pirates decided to leave their adorable whale Laboon with Crocus at Reverse Mountain and embark into the Grand Line, promising to return to Laboon when they had completed their journey. Something that would sadly never happen, as in 1474, after a string of horrific disasters, the Rumbar Pirates met their demise in the Florian Triangle, with Brook becoming the sole survivor due to his Devil Fruit abilities. However, he would remain alone in this part of the world for the better part of the next five decades. Quite possibly the most important year now, because in 1479, a young Charlotte Katakuri apparently filled his mouth with far too many donuts and ripped it open, resulting in his iconic pelican eel mouth. And I definitely thought we all needed to know exactly when and how this happened. Then in 1485, this would be the year where the Roger Pirates became the first crew to reach the final island in the Grand Line known as Lodestar. This island alerted them to the presence of the Poneglyph and even the Hidden Island's Laugh Tale. Although they would not reach the latter for quite some time, lots of time, ever so much time. Potentially due to things like in 1486 when the God Valley incident occurred. This saw Goldie Roger and Monkey D. Garp join forces to defeat the Rocks Pirates led by Rox D. Zebek, a man who subsequently vanished from existence along with the entire island of God Valley. Very mysterious. But zooming to the year 1491, and in this year, Don Quixote Homing would make one of the worst decisions in all of One Piece when he chose to renounce his world noble status and took his family to live down on the Blue Sea. His wife proceeded to die within a year, setting into motion a series of events that would lead Homing's son, Don Quixote del Flamingo, to eventually murdering his father. And at this stage, the remnants of the Rocks Pirates began recruiting their own forces, seeing the birth of some of the world's most renowned pirate crews, such as the Beast Pirates, Golden Lion Pirates, and the Whitebeard Pirates. And with the Whitebeard Pirates specifically in 1494, they would visit the land of Wano and accidentally recruit a man named Kozuki Odin. Shortly after, they also discovered Amatsuki Toki, who had traveled to this point in time all the way from the Void Century, so Whitebeard, Odin, and Toki sailed together for quite a while. Two years later in 1496, Roger discovered that he had a fatal disease and very, very little time left to discover Laugh Tale. In order to treat his increasingly weakening state, the Roger Pirates recruited Crocus, who I just guess left a Laboon on his own at Reverse Mountain for a few years. That's all right, he can hold the fort. In 1497, the Roger Pirates engaged in the Battle of Ed War against longtime rival and former Rocks member Golden Lion Shiki. However, due to favorable weather conditions, the Roger Pirates proved victorious and Shiki's fleet was annihilated. Then the very next year in 1498, Roger would recruit Kozuki Odin after meeting up with the Whitebeard Pirates and discussing the Poneglyphs. Odin, who could read them, decided to follow Roger from here on out, much to Whitebeard's annoyance. And finally, in 1499, the Roger Pirates discovered and named the Island of Laugh Tale. After completing their journey, Roger became known as the Pirate King throughout the world, after which point Kozuki Odin returned to Wano to discover it under the rule of Orochi and Kaido. Then in the nice round year of 1500, Roger turned himself over to the Marines and was subsequently executed in Logtown. With Roger's final words sparking the Great Age of Piracy and inspiring several generations to embark on a quest to find the One Piece and become the next Pirate King. In response to this, Roger's former rival Shiki launched a one-man assault on Marineford that destroyed half of the island before he was eventually brought down by Garp and Sengoku. After mourning for his former captain, a young Shanks also began his journey as a pirate captain, even inviting Buggy to be his first crew member, although the small clown rejected his request. Meanwhile, on Water 7, the shipwright Tom was put on trial for building Roger's ship, the Orange Jackson, but was spared from execution and instead given 10 years to build the revolutionary sea train. In 1502, a world-shaking event would occur, being the O'Hara incident. After the island, scholars were caught researching the Void Century, a buster call was ordered on the island, destroying the now 5,000-year-old Tree of Knowledge and killing all but one resident of the island, being a very young Nico Robin. Tragedy would also be present on the island of Batrilla as Port Gastiace was born, but at the expense of the life of his mother and former lover of Roger, Port Gasti Rouge. In slightly better news though, this was also the year that Shanks met Yasop, so something good did happen this year at the very least. Moving to 1504, and this would be the year where Whitebeard claimed Fishman Island. Despite the fact that they had been under an alliance with the world government because that proved to be next to meaningless, and Whitebeard decided to take the kingdom under his personal protection. Far away in the new world on Wano, Kozuki Odin and his vassals would choose this year to face off against Kaido, and that did not go well, as Odin was executed, and Toki sent Kinemon, Momonosuke, Kandro, and Raizo 20 years into the future. Meanwhile, in East Blue, a marine named Belmare discovered two children on a decimated battlefield, a young Nojiko and a baby Nami. Belmare then proceeded to adopt them and retire from the Marines. Now, in 1506, there was only one event of note, but I need to say it. This is when the Charlotte de Couplets 
were born. And that might not seem like such a big deal until you realize that Big Mom literally pushed 10 whole people out of her in one go. So I think that's a pretty timeline worthy achievement. Two years later in 1508, a slightly sadder achievement, a much sadder achievement actually, not even really an achievement. Look, it was the extermination of Flavance that was put into effect, eventually resulting in a young and now homeless Trafalgar Law joining the Don Quixote Pirates. And one year on, we turn to the year 1509, where former slave Fisher Tiger climbed the red line and enacted a rebellion on the Holy Land of Marijuana, freeing many slaves such as Boa Hancock and her sisters in the process. The three sisters were eventually found by Silvers Rayleigh and Shaki, who helped them return to Amazon Lily, where Boa Hancock would eventually go on to become the Empress of the Kuja tribe. Meanwhile, in mink-related news, this would be the year that the Knox Pirates were founded with a mission of hunting down poneglyphs all throughout the world. And with everything we've learned about poneglyphs on this timeline thus far, well, this could not possibly go badly for them, could it? However, the most important event of 1509 was when Foxy the Silver Fox had his boxing license revoked because he was caught cheating during a match. Who would have thought? Foxy of all people. I am shocked and chagrined. Two years later in 1511 on Minion Island, Trafalgar Law was fed the Ope Ope no Mi by Don Quixote Rosinante in order to save his life. Unfortunately, Rosinante was killed shortly after by his brother Doflamingo, who now has a bit of a streak when it comes to killing his family members. Then in 1512, Shanks and his crew of the Red Hair Pirates would arrive at Fuchsia Village in East Blue, deciding to make it their temporary base. And here the events of chapter one of One Piece play out as they meet a young Monkey D. Luffy who accidentally eats the Gomu Gomu no Mi and develops a dream to become the Pirate King. After Shanks and his crew depart, Luffy is then taken by Garp to live with Mountain Bandits, where he meets and forms a brotherly bond with both Ace and Sabo. Meanwhile, in the Grand Line, the Sun Pirates meet Koala and return her to her family, resulting in an ambush and the death of Fisher Tiger. Afterwards, Arlong is caught by Kizaru and is imprisoned in Impel Down. Although Arlong would be freed in 1513 by Jinbei, who agreed to serve the world government as a warlord of the sea, Arlong then took some former members of the Sun Pirates to go and start his own crew. At the same time, the pirate Zeph encountered Sanji during a raid on a cruise ship, and the two became shipwrecked for 85 days. Although after miraculously surviving, Zeph vowed to abandon his pirating lifestyle and build the floating restaurant Baratier. Also in East Blue in Shimotsuki Village, to be precise, Zoro and Kuina had their 2000 first match, which also served as Kuina's 2000 first win. The two children then made a promise that one of them would become the world's greatest swordsman, and after Kuina's very sudden death that same year, Zoro would dedicate himself to fulfilling this goal for both of them. Now in 1514, we have what is probably the most depressing year in all of One Piece. Firstly, because this is when Arlong and his crew would commandeer Kokuyashi Village, murder Belmare, and effectively enslave Nami. Elsewhere on Water 7, the shipwright Tom is framed by Spandam of CP5, who used Frankie's weapons to attack the island. Tom was subsequently arrested and executed for a crime that he did not commit. On the sea floor, Queen Otohime would be assassinated by Hody Jones, and in the New World, Doflamingo would perform a coup on Dress Rosa, forcing King Riku to kill his own subjects and installed himself as the new king, signaling a bloody return to the Don Quixote dynasty of old. So look, it was a pretty rubbish year for all involved, with the exception of Foxy, who began his lucrative career of participating in Davy backfights. Two years later in 1516, a newly half-human Tony Tony Chopper would be found by Dr. Hirolok and made his assistant. Hirolok unfortunately passed away later that year and Chopper became the student of Dr. Kureha. Meanwhile, in 1517, the most powerful pirate crew in existence, the Usopp pirates were formed. This also happened to be the year where the world government decided to send Rob Lucci, Kaku, Kalifa, and Bluno onto the island of Water 7 as undercover agents in order to find the blueprints for the ancient weapon Pluton, an effort that would see them live and work there for five whole years. Speaking of Pluton, the year after this, 1518, a desperate Nico Robin joins forces with Sir Crocodile and his organization Baroque Works, whose goal is to locate and revive the ancient weapon Bluton. And in a huge landmark event, 1518 was also when Shanks became officially recognized as an Emperor of the Sea. Then in 1519, Port Gastiace, at the age of 17, left the Goa Kingdom in order to become a pirate. And in the exact opposite move, Captain Kuro decided to retire from piracy and become a butler. A very evil butler, but still, you know, he was actually a very good butler, come to think of it, up until he wasn't. Although elsewhere in the New World, this would be the year where the Nox pirates, who were now pretty much just Pedro and Zeppo, well, they infiltrated Totterland in order to find Big Mom's poneglyphs. Sadly and expectedly, these two were caught, after which point Zeppo was killed and Pedro had 50 years of his lifespan removed before being ejected from the Empire. Getting very close now, because in 1520, a very young Kobe would become pirate Captain Alveda's unwilling chore boy. Elsewhere, Ace found and consumed the Merimero no Mi on the island of Sixus, and together with Mask Juice, they founded the Spade Pirates, and would even end up on the island of Wano later that year. This also happened to be the year where Caesar Clown destroyed Punk Hazard's entire ecosystem with his experimental weapons, causing him to be arrested by the world government, although he did swiftly escape. But that brings us to the one and only, the most important year in this entire timeline, 1522. This is the year where Luffy left Fushi 
village to begin his journey to become the Pirate King. Basically, this is where One Piece effectively begins, and well, we pretty much know the story from there. It took about 5,000 years of history to get us to this point, but that just shows the incredible world-building talents of Echiro Oda. And if you'd like to see another timeline video detailing the actual series, then please do feel free to let me know in the comments below, or even join the discussion on our Discord server. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.